Somebody asked a question about um, email and how often we use email from Python. This is an example of the robot sending us an email in the morning saying, here's what I looked at. And um, you'll be happy to know you've got data because I know that you're a user of that specific project. And here's all the data. And by the way, if you want to grab the data, because I've already reduced all the data um, into a digestible form, um, you can. Uh, you, you can now go grab it, and here's the SSH that you need to do that. So that's you know, that's pretty powerful. Um, obviously, the power of that, of course, is that if you do get hit by a bus, your robot keeps going. Um, the negative of that, of course, is that you can just send lots and lots of email, and eventually it sort of becomes spam for everybody. OK, so um, not a huge amount of information content uh, remaining. I know you guys have powered through it all. And so I just want to say some. Um, parting words uh, to all of you and sort of uh, give you some directions of where you might go now that you are um, uh, certainly sold on the whole uh, idea of Python. Um, I did want to make an explicit thanks um, to the National Science Foundation who partly um, offset some of the costs uh, for, for this boot camp. Um, and many of you uh, who aren't students also um, helped uh, defray the costs, but thank you. I have my own version of new science. This is the faculty version, I guess. Uh, so we'll go through this, and now this should make some uh, sense to you. Uh, we have to do exploration and discovery. So in a try accept statement, um, I have to gain this like insight and serendipity from my prior experience. And then using that, I generate some great idea. If I can't find my own, then I just steal somebody else's. And you see I use the copy.copy .copy appropriately. Maybe it's copy.e copy. .e copy. Um, we have to get funding, and so we assume that we're not funded at the beginning, and then we enter this while loop, and we write a proposal, and we submit that proposal. Uh, we wait about six months, uh, then we hear it doesn't get funded, usually, and then we go back into the while loop and keep on writing. Um, you haven't learned about multiprocessing yet, but essentially, uh, it's like kind of a poor man's parallelism that's not inside of uh, my Python. It's actually built into the um, native package. And there you just create basically a bunch of worker classes. So I've got some grad students and postdocs. I've got some undergrads in the pool. Um, and then we basically just uh, have them go and run and do stuff and find results. Then we write a paper. Um, then we decide where we're going to submit that paper. And of course, the paper gets accepted, um, in this case, to the journal Science immediately without revision. So we don't have to wait. And then I have to add a you know CV item. I reap all the rewards, and you see that I'm thanking all my grad students, <laughs> not postdocs. Um, <laughs> that's how it works, guys. So um, you can uh, fork this on GitHub, and you can actually issue uh, pull requests if you like. I've already been fielding pull requests after I presented this to Science um, at a Sci-Fi conference um, fairly recently. People are saying, uh, "What did I have wrong here? Oh, you're not supposed to do this." This is considered bad style, so I should have put these, I shouldn't have had the sending columns and bring that back down there. And then also, I think I imported something uh, too far down. This from prior experience should have been done at the top, that's some of the new stylistic stuff. Um, so have fun with that. See if you can get this even smaller to do great stuff. Um, so we've been talking a lot about the, some of the built-in functionality. I think all of you now are quite familiar with um, Python syntax. And it's certainly nice to know when you saw something that didn't look Pythonic that a few of you piped up and said, wait a second, why are those square brackets? That doesn't look like um, a function call. Uh, I think you're now comfortable enough with that that you can go off um, to the Python documentation um, and now just start searching for packages that you might need. We just introduced you to about five or six new modules um, that, that come uh, baked into Python um, just in this last lecture. And you see, I think we've scratched the surface, not just with what we saw earlier today with some of the third party packages of how powerful Python can be, but also with some of the built in packages like the email stuff and the web browser stuff and the parsing stuff. Um, so the documentation is a really good place to start. Um, make sure you type in python.org and not python.com. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that here, especially because you're sitting in the first row and you can see your screen. Uh, you can use your imagination to guess what python.com is. Um, another thing in python.org uh, is the um, Python package or the G shop 
where you can go and um, basically find packages that live in third party land. These aren't um, as sort of super well curated as perhaps you're used to if like you're used to the Perl uh, ecosystem. Um, but most of the things that are up here uh, are very useful. You have to start using some of your judgment to make decisions about whether it's actually worth it for you to sort of um, become reliant upon a package. And one way to do that is try to guess at what that um, bus factor is. If there is a large number of people working on a code base and they're not all exactly from the same institution, um, and it's been around for a while, it's gone through a couple different versions, and they're using Git, and you see that it's fairly active, you're probably okay to start using it. But if it's somebody who just put it up on GitHub and it's you know three or four years old and it was basically uploaded once and never touched again, um, you know proceed with extreme caution there. Uh, so there is the functionality that you need, which is already out there, um, but you have to be careful about how you start um, using it and how you start pulling it in. We didn't go into installing third-party packages, but it's essentially as easy as saying pip install package name. And I think all of you already have pip. If not, almost all of you have easy underscore install, which is basically similar. So you have to get used to installing packages that way. And if you're trying to pull in a core nthought package, um, you can be using this over time as you hear that nthought sort of bumps up its version of IPython to 0.14, for instance. You can just issue that again, and you know, you've got 0.14. Um, so you're basically at this point now where you're going to be maintaining your own sort of world view of Python on your laptop, and you're going to have to make sure that it's um, reasonably stable. If it doesn't remain reasonably stable, usually you're going to have a problem, and you're going to wind up saying, this is some strange error message. I don't understand how to do this. Um, Stack Overflow uh, is your friend here. Usually when you Google essentially the output of what Python barks at you, um, you will get pointed to some Google uh, um, view of Stack Overflow, and Stack Overflow almost has always answered your question. Um, if not, feel free to sort of join that community and start asking questions um, of Stack Overflow. If you want to sort of understand what people are asking about um, in the Python world and maybe even thinking about which packages they want to get into, um, you can go to Reddit. Uh, Reddit has a fairly active um, uh, posting of, uh, of sort of what's hot in Python. Um, and in fact, I was on read it the other day, it was pretty cool, I was on the front page, uh, because somebody posted my SciPy um, uh, sci uh, talk. They just talked about MATLAB for, for some reason on the comments, so it's not like it was all that interesting. <laughs> um, you can go to Quora, and Quora is sort of starting to emerge, not so much for answering specific questions like why did I get this uh, bar from, from the command line, but sort of for high level questions if you're saying, should, what kind of database should I use and how well does it interact with Python? These are sort of questions um, you might uh, see answered there. And Quora itself is using Python for its own development and all of its back engine. Um, another very cool thing in Quora is that they have this active list of cool things you can do in Python, Pythonic tricks. Some of these you've already seen. Some of them are kind of cute. Some of them are actually pretty powerful. Um, I'm actually following this question so you can Every time it gets updated, you can see what people are saying. So that's kind of a fun thing to follow. Other people and things to follow about the benevolent dictator for life, you can follow Guido. Um, I'm sure he'd be happy to have you as a friend. Um, Fernando Perez, for instance, the creator of IPython. He's not here now, but um, he's also actively talking about other new packages that are sort of rising up into the ecosystem. Um, Bill Gates, you probably want to unfriend him. <laughs> Um, but perhaps most important for us is that we hear back from you what you liked and didn't like about um, this boot camp. If you could, go to the agenda uh, or go to just the main website and on the left hand side now you'll see a little link that says um, feedback. If you could go there and just take a couple of minutes after uh, we end and basically give us your feedback, we'd be very, very uh, thankful. Um, last. I've mentioned this before, but it's just one more plug. We are doing a Python computing for scientific research class, um, which will have more or less the flavor in terms of the homework and the level of the homework of what you had last night, where we will wind up basically um, teaching you each week 
in a sort of three hour intensive format, a little bit like a mini boot camp, and sort of a completely different concept. So we've got parallelization, and this is actually what we you know, learning about GPUs then. Um, really getting to some of the details of NumPy and SciPy. We'll do a lot of machine learning on October 1st, um, and so on and so on. So there's, I think, something for everyone, and even if it's not obvious that it's going to be useful uh, for your own research, um, I'm guessing that uh, you'll benefit from having seen all this. And, and basically, instead of scratching the surface, we're basically going to lay it all out. And by the end of the week, after you coded up that project, you'll have a pretty good understanding of how to do all that stuff yourself. Um, it's an astronomy class um, in that you know I'm, I'm not only teaching it and um, and I guess astronomy gets credit for people uh, who've t uh, taken it, but um, we really don't have much astronomy, astronomy in it at all. Um, it really is supposed to be agnostic to the domain. Um, obviously, if we're going to be introducing examples, we do bring up um, examples from different domains just because we have to have something which is worth uh, solving. Um, but uh, it, it should be accessible to anybody who's sort of working um, in sort of quantitative uh, scientific fields. Uh, so with that, um, I'll say bye, and uh, thank you all for your time and your effort, your blood, sweat, and tears. We hope it paid off for you, and we hope um, your life is a little different. We hope you start using Python uh, in your daily workflow. Um, if you go to that website, by the way, that's a full panoramic 360 all stitched together, um, and you can play around with that and show your friends. You can find yourself up there. All right, thanks everybody.